All right, so we get cool here with Paul from Dead Original. How you doing, man? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. So how are you holding up during all this craziness that we got going on? You know, I've actually enjoyed the downtime to reassess uh, life. And it's, uh, but other than that, I want to get back out and just play shows. <laughs> now, it's got to be a hard time for being a musician, especially one like yourself. I mean, you guys got all these great releases coming out. You're building up on the charts and uh, you ain't got nowhere to go. Nothing to do, you know? Yeah, exactly. But uh, we're just hoping for the best, and we're we're booking shows as we speak. So we're gonna do what we can, and uh, that's about it. It's all we can do, right? Where are you trying to book shows at right now? Um, just just right now, it's like we can't really book official tour, so we're just doing like weekend warrior stuff. So in in your area, or um, we well we uh. We got some dates in like Seattle, Boise, Idaho, uh, Texas, Kansas. Uh, we got some holds in New York, so it's just, you know it's a uh, work in progress. And a lot of a lot of the shows have been keep, keep getting pushed back since you know March of last year. So yeah, one thing I was gonna say, I only noticed that there's only certain areas that you're allowed to do shows right now. And I mean, I'm in New York myself, and everything's fucked here, so. They say yeah. thing and another thing happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh and it changes, you know, it's you know, um the mayor of Chicago, like just three or four days ago, it was like Laura Layford said, uh, open up businesses when you know this whole time Pritzker and her were like closing down businesses, you know. And I'm not saying I'm siding with any any of the politics here, I'm just saying it's you know, one second news and people will say to do one thing and then two days later it's different you know so oh dude, like i said I'm in, I'm in new york dude como has had it where it was no shows no shows now all of a sudden he's like we got to get everything open it's just like well if i can make up your mind how's it gonna happen you know yeah exactly so you know one thing i've seen is uh they're talking about having bigger places open up but only having small crowds come like they're talking about here in, in my, yeah. like, uh, like baseball fields and shit like that, you know, like minor leagues. Yeah. It's gotta be weird for you guys to play. If it happens, you know what I mean? Having a few hundred people show up, something that holds a couple thousand, never, never been all spaced out. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, uh, we're not a thousand seater band. We're brand new. So the biggest crowds we play and sometimes we play with, uh, my, you know our tribute band smells like nirvana and that's where we do the bigger shows we you know we play like a 2000 seater in kansas the cotillion wichita kansas and uh you know for us being a new band that's it's not the worst it, it is bad though if you play in a big big venue it looks empty you know right, but, man, yeah so all of it's weird man i feel like we could have a whole different conversation right now <laughs> <laughs> now when uh when, th when things come up, it'll be the perfect time for you. Like you mentioned, you're, you're an up and coming band. So when venues start going, you're the one that's going to be getting booked. Yeah, I, I can't see someone huge stepping down to play, you know, a smaller place. And those are going to be the ones that are open right away. Yeah, I honestly, I kind of, you know, minus people that have been dying from COVID-19. I think in the music industry, this is really going to strip away the big budgeted projects that people don't really care about i feel like this is going to be something that if you're really passionate about music you're still going to do it you know um that's what i felt this whole time like wow this, this could be an opportunity for us you know a band like ours if we get 200 300 people at a club that's awesome you know and especially because we're not on a major label, like there's nobody in the way of taking profits, you know? So, I mean, yeah. So I don't know. I, I could get into something deeper with that too, but I am looking at this in an optimistic way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> got to, man. It's the only way, you know? Yeah. So you almost had to reinvent the way that you promote things now without being able to tour. I mean, I, I noticed that you guys do a lot of singles and you're spreading them out. Is that just to keep fans 
going until the album drops? Yeah, it will. It's it just like, we're like, what are we doing? Like, we're supposed to release this album last year. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it, and it's like the platform has changed. It's like some, some artists and bands are like, should we just do singles? You know, but people are buying our album. They're buying it directly from us on our website. We're selling like one to two a day, which, you know, is not a lot. I think if you were like on an indie label or something like that, but it's still to us, that's cool because, you know, even back in the, you know, I didn't, uh, I wasn't in the band in the early nineties, but I just read a, a blog from uh, Van Halen's guitar saying, uh, or singer, sorry, that, uh, yeah, I'm having a brain fart right now. Oh, that they would, they would make a dollar off every CD, you know? Right. Whereas, we, whereas for us, it's, it's 100% profit minus the cost of packaging. I don't know. I think there's definitely pros and cons with technology. I think if there wasn't technology right now, yeah, a lot, a lot of bands and artists would be screwed. <laughs> Now, you mentioned you're selling a couple CDs a day, which is good considering the fact that people don't want to pay for music these days. I mean, they feel entitled to getting that shit for free. Exactly. I th Well, what we're doing is on, on our websites, you know, deadoriginal.com, we're offering free shipping. People like free. Right. You know, we started saying that, and people, we've been saying one to two CD sales. It's free shipping, and then we'll sign it. So I think it's people that, you know, like I said, this goes back to people I feel like after this pandemic, it's really going to weed out, you know, the, the fallacy, the falseness of the industry. What you're going to see is, in my opinion, people that really love music are going to go to shows and people that really care about playing music, that don't care about high budgeted things are going to go and play with their band, you know? Right. So I think that's what we're going to see, you know? See, it's cool that you guys are doing the autographs on your discs. I mean, uh, that's something people are going to want to order just because. Well, you know, it was, uh, yeah, if, if that's the reason why I buy it, that's cool. I also think, I think it's kind of like vinyl. People, they want the CD, you know, hang on their wall. <laughs> well, you know, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, I don't even know if I own a CD player. You know, you know what I mean? But I know. I would Dude, order. I know. Just, I know. I, I don't order just to get the autograph. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if people do own CD player, it's like in their old car, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. I had a laugh. Someone sent me a DVD the other day and uh, to watch something. I'm like, the fuck am I even going to play this on, man? I'm like, I don't have yeah. a DVD player. Yeah. Oh, Dude, I used, to, I used to sell CDs. I used to, I used to growing up in like middle school, high school, I would, I would burn copies of my band's discs and sell them at a mall. I'd make like 60 to 100 bucks a day. Pretty, pretty funny. Pretty grassroots. Yeah, right. times, have, times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember back in the day, man, I went to a corn show and Fred Durst was running around he, and handing out cassette tapes for Limp Bizkit because they weren't signed yet or nothing. They had three tracks on it. And he was like, Here you really? Go. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. I still got it. That's awesome. Uh -huh. I've thought about doing that with just flyers, man, like flying in the festivals. Right. And just passing out like a flyer of just the band name and saying, you know, free download or something. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. You know, spend a couple thousand bucks just to, for plane tickets and it'd probably be worth it, you know. <laughs> Get <laughs> well, the name out. Hopefully they have uh, festivals once again, you know. <laughs> you know I, mean, I know. I know. I'm, I was talking about the past, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Every time I turn around, something else gets canceled. Yeah. So, uh, with your time with Trivium, uh, were you one of those jujitsu dudes? No, no, I wasn't. I was, I was more with uh, the vodka, orange juice. <laughs> I, was, no, I, was, I was hanging out with Corey a lot on the right, bus. Right. <laughs> it was funny one time. Uh, I went to do an interview with uh, with the band, and I went to the room where they told me to do, and they were just fucking wrestling it up. They had on all their equipment on and shit, and they're tossing each other around. Yeah, yeah, Matt did that like every day, dude. Very, very disciplined, you know. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I was just like, "Well, I'm in the wrong room for sure, man. This, this is Fight Club." Yeah, <laughs> it's a workout too, you know. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah, definitely. 
So I see that uh, you're going to be doing some covers soon. Is that right? Yeah, well, our plans are after the album drops, just do what people do on YouTube, you know, make tutorials about us, about whatever, and you, you release covers and release originals, you know. Do um, you, you have any tracks in mind, anything that you plan on doing? or Probably going to do like Fell on Black Days, maybe Them Bones by Alice in Chains. Do it, do it our style, because those are really amazing singers. Right. <laughs> so I see that you do a, uh, you're a Nirvana cover band too, is that right? Yeah. That's what um, kind of inspired this whole thing, because, you know, my whole life I've been a drummer, and doing the tribute thing really taught me, you know, the role of a front man. And, you know, when people, like, sing back a song, kind of makes sense on, like, how or, or why a song was kind of written. You know, it's uh, it's a different mentality than like, yeah, it's it's. I've learned a lot. It's really cool, man. <laughs> so, at what point were you in the back drumming, thinking, you know what, fuck this, I want to be the front man? When I joined Trivium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got like bored after like three months. Like, you know what, I'm just gonna go home and who cares, you know. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to do my own thing. <laughs> right. So, so I mean, you fell into it pretty good, man. I mean, you know, you would never guess that you were never, uh, you know, just just the background drummer. Now you're the certified front man for sure. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I just honestly, I don't even look at it like that. Like, I think what I'm doing is like what the modern musician should be doing. Like, we, you know, I engineered the album, I produced it, I mixed it, um, minus like three songs, and. Uh, I just wear many hats in the band and I, you know, I don't even think of myself as a singer. <laughs> I'm just like, like a working musician, you know, I, you know, so, um, but I mean, that, that would be a goal, right? That'd be kind of cool just to be a singer, just show up with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you took that Nirvana method to heart, man. You're the next Dave Grohl there for sure. <laughs> Thanks, man. That would be cool. That would be a dream tour. It'd be cool to tour with the Foo Fighters. Maybe one day. <laughs> Got to make sure you don't fall off the stage a couple of times, you know? Yeah. We toured with uh, Candlebox, man, before the pandemic. That was cool. Yeah, man, they're good dudes. Yeah, great great singer, man. Every now I was like, whoa, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the newest release is Blasted, man. I love the song. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Um. We have a focus track coming out called Bored Again. I don't know if, have you heard Bored Again or no? No, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, okay. Because I'm asking because it was a re-release from like two years ago when the band started. And uh, we're, we've we been saving it our, as the focus radio song. So we're going to push it to radio and all that. If, if radio exists, who knows? <laughs> See, that's the one thing, though, man. I mean, music right now is the only thing that we have. I mean, if you, you look around, there ain't shit going on. There ain't no movies. There ain't no TV shows. There's shit. The movie comes out lately. It's a piece of shit. That's why it got released straight to uh, TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. Music's the only new thing that's that's going and pushing through. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for me hearing new tracks and fucking around on video games, dude, I think I'd be in the insane asylum right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. I'm a, I'm a fan of Blacklist. Have you seen that show on Netflix? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm re-watching it because there's nothing to watch. Exactly what I've been, I just heard. <laughs> on my, I got three episodes left of Sopranos. I just started watching all that again. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Got to pick some old shit because everything new yeah. is dog piss, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so... What's it like interacting with the fans on uh, social media and stuff like that? I mean, especially the way that you have to adapt to these days. Well, again, you know, we're, we're a small new band. We're not in a major label or even an indie label. So we'll get, you know, one message, a couple, two messages a day or something. And when we do get them, they're really like, they're really cool. Cause they'll be like either an older person or a younger person. And they'll be like, this is cool. It has like this nineties vibe, but it, it sounds modern, you know, it's got like that old school vibes. It's like, I love it, you know, and then 
um, those people end up like buying merch and stuff from our website. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure, you know. But it's it's very it's very like I would say like they're like just passionate. It. You know, they're like it and for me it's cool because it's like, dude, you know, my whole life I've been a drummer like for music that I was never I didn't really even write, was a part of, you know, like um before the Trivium guys I jammed with Rock of Ages, which is a musical, it was cool. Um, I played for Kill Hannah and I did a lot of projects. I even played drums for like an Alice in Chains tribute and you know, when you're and when you're like a work for hire drummer and it's not your music, you're just like, cool. Where, where's when do I get some free drinks? You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, it's 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 been cool. You know, it's like I feel like everything in life is like, as a musician, you, you should be progressing, right? Right. Like, whether or not you're popular or whatever, just as, as a musician, you're getting better and better and better and that's what I'm seeing. Like, I'll get a message like, man, you, I love your song. It's great. And it's like, I remember like 10 years ago, I was like, how do you write a great song? Like, how do you, I'm not saying that our stuff's great or whatever, but I was like that. I would think like, how do you do that? How do you, how do you do it? And now it's like, I'll write something and then I'm on to the next thing. I don't even care anymore. I'm just like, who cares? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but then when we get that response, like, oh, it's, it's an amazing song. You're a good songwriter. I'm just like, dude, that's cool. Awesome. All the years of hard work is paying off, you know. <laughs> now, have you played any shows so far since the uh, pandemic's been going on? We've been doing like one, two shows a month. So we did. We the last show we played was uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and uh, it was rough. It was like fifty people. <laughs> <laughs> It was rough too, right? So, I guess that's the one thing I wanted to know. I mean, I haven't really seen uh, too many live shows. Like I said, uh, I'm in New York. I haven't had shit here. The only when they were doing shows, you had to, you couldn't book it as a concert. You had to uh, buy food, and you could have music accompanying it. So, like, if you went to a show, you had to sit there, like, you had to order food, and the band could play in the background, but you couldn't book it as the band was going to be here and sell tickets you had to oh really yeah you had to like sell hot dogs or chicken wings or shit or admission price it's real fucking weird man so what like like lounge music like jazz bands and stuff no any band could play but you just couldn't like let's say you came to new york to play all right so it's all political it's like okay it's uh lounge music right but so and so is playing yeah you know like an underground type feel to it i guess except you know everyone's sitting there fucking Instead of cheering with a beer, like cheering with a goddamn chicken wing in their hand, like way to go, dude. We've done that at like casinos with the Nirvana tribute. It's been like the weirdest thing, dude. People, they're like sitting next to the stage eating food and shit. We're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. So I understand that. It's very weird. It's very yeah. strange. Crazy times, you know, for sure. Yep. Instead I'm of just... mosh pits, people are eating chicken wings. Yeah, right. You know. Tossing all the blue cheers there. Yeah. Strange times, man. I'm, I'm just waiting to have something go, a little momentum in the right direction of normalcy. I know. I, I mean, I had a conspiracy. This is all political. So, okay, well, whoever becomes president next probably be like six months and we're back to normal, hopefully. Well, I mean, they're, we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> they're cranking out that fucking vaccine, man. So, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna be a guinea pig and take that shit. I don't know what they're pumping in there. I know, I know, dude. I'm in the same boat. I'm like, no thanks. Yeah. Uh, it's like the, the flu's been around forever. Now they got this new thing. Someone developed something in nine months. Fuck that. I'm not taking that. Someone yeah. Grow an extra head or nuts or Yeah, fun. usually usually it takes years to develop, right? So when you play shows, and you got to when you come home, do you got to quarantine or how's that work? No, no, no quarantine. Um, that would be weird. I think I think quarantine stuff has to do with like, you know, if somebody has a day job or something with their job, right? Uh, how does that work? <laughs> I don't well, know. Like I, I, 
I, I spoke with uh, Waylon Rivas yesterday. He did a show in Texas from the Killer's Confession. He played with Elson and stuff. And he said when he came back home, they made him get a, uh, you know, the shit up your nose, the test. And then he had to wait until he was negative before he can do anything. Well, he was, he did like a, like a three week tour though, right? I think they just played Texas for a couple of days. Oh, that's weird. No, that hasn't happened. Maybe it, maybe it's the state regulations. Like everything's different everywhere. I guess right now it's yeah weird. Well, going to uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin from Illinois isn't a big deal. I don't think we get stopped or anything like that. So, so after this, man, what's next for you? Um, well, with music and stuff. In general, music, whatever. Well, we're just, yeah, so we're releasing the album February 26th, and then we're just going to release, like, interesting cover, hopefully interesting covers and singles in the months to come after that, you know, and try to book shows where we can. Um, so I like your guys' name, so, so fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. So fucking. As soon as I heard that, I was like, is this a joke? What? Is this, real? Is this a magazine? It's so funny. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is uh, when I used to do, well, when things were open, you know what I mean? The, the background was always a couch somewhere. So now everyone's like, oh, that's why you're the sofa king? It's like, no, we're in a fucking green room. They just happen to have a sofa in here. Yeah. You go say it fast. It's the old joke, man. You know, so fucking cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told Song that. She's like, wow, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. That's... I think you're kidding me. That's the first thing I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. That's awesome. That's like when uh, Disturb came out with like one of their first singles, and they were saying the word fuck. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Like... Hidden we... gem. Yeah, for sure. One of the few that get it off the bat, so that's cool. So when you start, after the album drops, you're doing singles, are they just going to go straight to uh, YouTube and Facebook and shit like that, or are you going to put them together in an album? What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. Just just kind of be organic about it. Like, again, like I said, we're, um, we're just kind of playing the waiting game. We're just picking up a couple, you know, weekends a month that we can play. Not being too aggressive with booking because, you know, a lot of the booking agents say the same thing or or club owners too. They're just like, you know, we have, we have 60 capacity or hundred capacity or 40. It's like, so we're just, you know, we're going to do what we can. We're, we're going to just release covers and new songs as they arise. Um, So well, that's cool, man. I, I see some bands that are going ahead and trying to book like a full-on tour and charging money for the tickets and shit for stuff that I know for a fact that's not going to happen. I mean, I got tickets for a sold-out show for Guns N' Roses, I think, two months. Rage Against the Machine, I got sold out for. That fucking show ain't happening. Neither one of them. Yeah. Could be a money grab. You know, some, <laughs> look for the uh, no refund. <laughs> <laughs> and the fine print. <laughs> well, you know, when you say it's a money grab, I, I think about that all the time now, especially uh, the weekend is playing the Super Bowl. And they said he just put $7 million of his own money into the set. Right after that, he just announced an arena tour with tickets on sale. So naturally, he's just going to use that money. You know what I mean? It's got to sit there somewhere. There's got to be some kind of profits that go through, even if it's shit get canceled. Yeah. You're booking for 2022. That right interest has got to raise somewhere. Well, you know, I I feel like we're living in interesting times, dude. Because why do you need seven million dollars to book a tour? <laughs> Just you know, um, if I had a hundred thousand dollars, I could I could book a three month tour, you know. But I I guess every artist. You know, if you have a team of people, I, I, I think what all I'm trying to say is we're definitely living interesting times, man, because musicians can record 
at home now. Like there's so many, to, there's like every day there's like a new YouTuber, like this is how you mix a song, you know, or this is how you promote your band. And, you know, it's like, we're becoming so self-sufficient. So again, I really feel like we're maybe in like five to six years, if we're not in the same predicament we are now, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of cool new mu mu music coming out in, uh, not that there isn't already, but like rock and metal, I think there's going to be a lot of more, more than there, there is today of like just cooler bands just touring on their own. And, and it doesn't have to be high budget, you know, so. So the only backlash I see about all the new music that's coming out is like, let's say touring doesn't start till 2022, you know what I mean? A band's going to put out two, three albums in that time. Well, they finally start touring again. It's like, what the fuck are you playing? I don't know any of these songs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't, <clears throat> I really don't know what's going on. I've been, like I said, I've been laying low, just chilling. I've been, to be honest with you, I've just been studying audio production like like crazy because I, you know, I'm hoping album two would be way cooler. Uh, so I don't know what's going on, but I assume a lot of bands are holding back all of, all of their great music because it only makes sense to release stuff to go on tour. For us, the reason why we're releasing it now is because it's been about a year and a half that this was supposed to be released. Right. So the and so it's just like let's just get it out there. You know, um, and this way, people that are a fan of us, they can digitally listen to it. You know, yeah, for sure. You know, we can work, work on album two. You know, it wasn't rocket science. It's just simple rock songs. Like we can, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just get it out there, man. So now, for those that want to follow up, they want to check out the videos. They want to order a copy of that autograph CD to hang on their wall. Where are they going to go? What are they going to do? Just go to deadoriginal.com. Deadoriginal.com. We got free shipping. We'll sign the CD. And uh, if you're curious about the name and what it means, I was just like, Mega Death. Dead Kennedys. Dead Original. That's how I kind of came up with the band name. <laughs> cool. It just, it just sounds cool. There's no real deep meaning here. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I, I like the name, man. You know, it's definitely uh, it sticks in your head. That's for sure. Cool, cool. And to also to be honest with you, once I stumbled across the name, I was like, maybe this will put a stop to all the bands with the word "dead" in it. And then we came. You know, we're part of the problem now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because dude, you'll see, you'll see, like, you know, "Dead in Five, uh, whatever, "Dead Mal," whatever that band's called. I don't know. A lot of a lot of bands with. with you know, mega death, you know, it's like, it's everywhere. Everyone's obsessed with, with uh, death and the band name. So, <laughs> you know, when you guys uh, put out your first single, I, uh, for the, for this album here, we premiered it for you and I kept fucking up the name. I had you guys as original dead all the way through there. And I was like, had it all written out and had it out. And they're like, no, man, you fucked up. It's dead. Yeah. Original. Yeah. Well, we, we play one show with Seether. Um, their support band fell off, so the venue, the Rave from Milwaukee, contacted us, and uh, there was like three thousand people, and they announced us, "Dead Originals," <laughs> plural. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny, "Dead Originals." I guess that kind of makes sense, but there's no there's no gimmick or theme. Like there's we don't wear face max. We're we're just we're just a rock band. So there's no, you know, I do like bands like that though. They, they have like Kiss, you know, Alice Cooper. You gotta get tired. One. You gotta Ghost. get tired of that shit sometimes. Yeah, Ghost does it. Doyle from yeah. the Fitz does it. Yeah. You gotta get it's tired. Like, it, bec it becomes its own thing, right? Like the band Ghost, don't they? Don't they say they like they like time travel or something? <laughs> He can do some weird shit, man, where the singer's been a different dude like every album. He keeps on changing yeah. his whole... Yeah. I think, like, crazy fans get into that, you know, whereas the average music fans like, what? Like, like us right now, we're like, I think they talk about... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, you know? Exactly. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're doing something yeah. different, you know? Yeah. It's funny. Well, cool, man. Well, thanks for having me, you know? 
Yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, I, I totally remember when you when you when you had us. That was cool. So I appreciate the support, dude. And hopefully we'll we'll get these New York dates going. We're probably gonna be. I think New York is like the hardest. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the toughest toughest one out of all three: Chicago, uh, California. Yep, it's uh, all Democratic states, so. They're all, they're all kind of the same <laughs> with restrictions. <laughs> States, country. Yeah, State. we got our big venues, uh, you know, like a 1,500-seater. They're booking a goddamn cover band as the as the huge act that's going through there. It's so weird seeing people that would never get to play some of these venues are. Yeah. The, the well, yeah, I mean, that's happening because it, it's easy to do it. It's, I mean, it's like, yeah, dude, like... I don't know. It's it just the the venues need to survive. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, getting a handful of people sure the fuck beats out of nobody. That's for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Cool, man. Well, cool. I, well, I appreciate your time. I look forward to uh, more things coming from you guys, and uh, can't wait to see what comes out next from you. Cool, man. Thanks for having me. All right, buddy. Take care of yourself. All right, later.